Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Gimpy Central training video. If you've been following along, you know that your image should look a lot like mine. We used the free select tool last time and we finished cutting out these window panes. We did leave a little bit of light window panes up here that were shining through this, uh, this lace or this curtain. And we are going to get to it, but first I want to talk a little bit about the magic wand or the fuzzy select tool and give you guys a visual representation of how it actually works. So first I want you to go to file, open, and I want you to open fuzzy select tool.png. This is the file that I've shared with you along with the other images. And if you notice, I'm in single window mode, so my projects are up here. I can easily switch between them. Okay, so we're on the fuzzy select tool. Now I have all, all these different colors here so I can show you um, how the fuzzy select tool helps you with your selection. Because remember, the fuzzy select tool is a selection tool. It doesn't actually make any changes to your picture. It just selects parts of your picture that you want to change, to add to, to enhance, to make any kind of edits to. So it, it, it does help you select, you know, a contiguous area. And what I mean by that is connected pixels. It's a tool designed to select areas of the current layer or image based on color similarity. And it's based on this threshold right here. I want you guys to start with a threshold around 15, it doesn't matter. And I want to show you exactly what that means. So I'm going to zoom in on this image. And let's start with the black. What I've done is I've created these gradients. So you can see there's the darkest darks of, the, of a particular color. And there's the lightest lights in that same color. Now, of course, colors are going to be blended together to make up your image. But this is a really good visual representation. So with the fuzzy select tool selected, with a very low threshold, leave the rest of these on default. We're just going to click somewhere on this on this uh, gradient. Okay, so I clicked in the middle. Notice it went to the left and it went to the right. What this does is the selected area expands outward from the center. It not only propagates to pixels that touch each other, it can actually jump over small gaps depending on the threshold option. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. For now, let's focus on propagating to the pixels that touch. So this threshold right here, let's call it 14. What you're doing is you're telling this magic wand tool, based on where you click, you're allowing the selection to go 14 shades darker and 14 shades lighter in the selection. So if I turn this down, I'm only allowing to go five shades darker and five shades lighter, no matter where I click. So if I click here, I'm going five darker, five lighter. Now, of course, this is a very easy representation when it's, when it's uh, all in a nice solid color on the gradient. On your image, just keep that in mind, that the higher this threshold goes, the more dissimilar you're allowing the selection colors to be. Now, if I turn this way up, let me turn up to like uh, 41. Now, I'm going 41 shades darker and 41 shades lighter. I want to remind you that I'm in the select by composite mode. We'll talk a little bit about the other modes in just a minute. I want to show you guys an easy way to change the threshold. Rather than just changing it on the slider and then clicking to see the result, what you can do is you can click and hold the mouse button and then you can drag it to the right or down to make it increase. Notice the threshold goes up as I do that. Now if I go up or to the left, the threshold goes down. You can see in real time it grow and shrink based on the threshold. So it's a really easy way to change your threshold and see the results in real time without having to click and change, click and change. Okay, so I just want to share that trick with you guys. 
Let's talk a little bit about feathering the edges. It works just the same as the other selection tools. When you click it, you decide how many pixels on the edge of your selection are going to be feathered. So when I make my changes, like say I wanted to delete it, remember you have to make a new selection after you choose feather edges. So I made a new selection and I hit delete. See the feathering going on? That's five pixels on each side that it's feathering. I'm going to control Z to undo that. Let's turn this down to two pixels, make a new selection and hit delete. Now you can see there's less feathering going on. Control Z to undo that. I recommend using feathering the edges every time you make a selection. So all these selection tools, make sure if it gives you the option to feather edges, go ahead and feather the edges. I think you'll be a little bit happier with your results. Let's talk a little bit about the select by. These are going to be important because as you can see, I'm going to zoom out and turn my threshold down to 15. As you can see, when you're on select by composite, the fuzzy select tool does not care what color you're clicking on. So essentially it treats all colors the same. There's no difference. The only thing, the only criteria is similarity of, of color. That's it. That's the only criteria. Let's talk about red. Same idea, except when you're selecting by the red criteria, you're favoring the red. The threshold's way too high for me to show you an example, so let's drop this to three. Okay, so look, everywhere else, I get just three high, three low, and then when I get to the red, a lot more. So when you're selecting by the red criteria, you're favoring the red colored pixels. It selected all of the yellow. It went up here, and I'm just gonna show you what it selected. So yellow is kind of a unique situation, but notice, see, the green isn't selected. The lighter reds are when I select yellow. The darker reds are not. And of course the black's not. That's when you're on selecting by the red criteria and you click a yellow color. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. And I do that so that you can visually see what's being selected if these little dotted lines don't actually make it obvious. Let's talk about the green. You notice that no matter what, yellow is going to get a bigger selection when you're when you're starting to filter by color. The blue, the red, they're treated the same and the black. Now the green is slightly favored. Actually yellow is slightly favored even more than the green when you select by green. Of, of course I want you guys to experiment with this so you guys can really see the difference in what this does. Let's do the same thing with the blue. It favors the blue. So if you're selecting an area on your image and, and you want to favor blue pixels, filter by the blue criteria. Now let's talk about hue. It's the same idea. We're selecting by the hue instead of the color. And of course my threshold on three. Let me turn that down to two and you can see I get even finer results depending on the color I click. Saturation, same idea. So you're selecting pixels that are similarly um, saturated with color. And it looks like it favors the grays, favors the light grays. Let's talk about value. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure what the value is. I'm thinking that GIMP must value different colors where the blacks would be a low value and the lights would be a high value. I want you guys to play around with that if you want as you become more comfortable using this tool. But for now, let's just stick with composite. Let's just go with strictly treat every color the same based on similarity of color. 
There's one last thing I wanted to show you about the fuzzy select tool. What the fuzzy select tool can do is it can actually jump pixels and select pixels on the other side of, you know, a barrier or an edge if the threshold is high enough. So to demonstrate that, I'm just going to use this paintbrush tool and I'm going to make sure I'm using black and I'm going to set the brush size to one pixel. Now I know we haven't covered this brush yet, but if you'll just play along for a little while, I'll show you something. So I'm just going to shift and click to make a nice line. Let's say you have an, an edge, you know, edge of a desk, a door, um, a car, the edge of a person, doesn't really matter. This is just representing um, some edge that you may run into on one of, one of your images. And if you have this fuzzy select tool, and I've got my composite selected, threshold of 15. What if I wanted all of these pixels, but I didn't want any of these? I could do like I talked about before and just simply increase my threshold. Then eventually I reach the boundary, and I'm good. And now I've selected all these and none of these. Well, what if I kept going? Okay, so watch the threshold as I move it up. What if I kept going? Eventually, I would pass it. See how I just passed the threshold? It will actually jump, no matter how similar these are, if you push it far enough, it will jump a barrier, a hard edge. And then it will select the things on the other side of it. Now, it's not going to look this clean on your image, but that's essentially what's happening. You're pushing the threshold too high, and it is making a jump over light, dark, doesn't matter, just something that's very dissimilar. It'll just jump right on over, and, and it'll select the pixels on the other side. So I just wanted to point that out. Now we're ready to go work on this other image. So let's zoom in. And let's get rid of these. We want to get rid of the, the light areas where the sun is showing through. So I'm just going to click them and press delete. Threshold of 15 is probably the best threshold to get started on this. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just don't want it to be obvious that these windows used to be a different color. Um, and that's going to be more obvious later on. So if I zoom out, you'll see now when we put our new image behind this one, you're going to see it through the curtain like it was meant to be instead of seeing the old window panes through this lace. We didn't talk about the modes, but they're identical to these other selection tools modes. And I don't recommend using these modes. The only one that would possibly be useful to you is the add to current selection. So if I have maybe inside this window and that window, I can just simply add more as I go. And if you don't want to go over here and click it, you can hold shift and it does the same thing. And then when you release shift, it goes back to the original mode. Hold shift again and you go back to add to current selection mode release shift and you go back anyway guys play around with this fuzzy select tool and get comfortable using it by the end of this demo your guys's image should look like mine in the next video we're gonna combine some of these skills that we've learned and we're gonna apply it to a little bit more difficult image anyway guys we'll see you next time